Hello class, um, today is going to be really, really brief because it's going to be an introduction to solving trigonometric equations. Uh, what you guys are going to be doing is that uh, you, using what you guys know about reference angles and those kind of things and uh, uh, the rectangular coordinates, the ASTC, all students uh, take calculus, uh, you guys will be solving a trigonometric equations, uh, but it's not going to be limited to just uh, between 0 to 90 acute angles like before. Uh, you guys will be solving a much more complicated a equations, and um, you will always have to remember that today you will you will always end up with two answers instead of one. And I'll go over that with you guys more on on, on detail. Okay, all right. So um, let's get started here. Uh, solve each equation for uh, th uh, zero to three sixty. You guys will always see this up here, and then when you guys are solving these questions. Uh, if I don't give you this, there's going to be a different story related to that, but you will see this uh, for the most cases for today. Now, um, when you're solving these questions, you have to remember, like I said from before, that you end up with two solutions in most cases, like 99% of the time, but you will have to remember this. If you just write down for me one answer, that is not going to work out, okay? So you guys have to remember that there are going to be two solutions. In the previous two a videos ago, maybe three videos ago, when I gave you that assignment with sine of uh, 3, 30, 60, 90, sine, cosine, tangent of 30, 60, 90, uh, no, no, I'm sorry, 30, 45, and 60, we have found out all those values that goes along with that. There are a total of nine values, and if you have this table in front of you, it should help you out a lot better to help you guide through how to do these problems. Now, another thing that you have to keep in mind is that no calculator is allowed. And you cannot use um, you know inverse trick to solve for these. So for example, for number one, when you guys were in the uh, school with me um, back in I think January or even December when we were solving for these trigonometric equations, all you have to all I told you to do was do inverse trig on both sides, right? So tangent of theta is equal to root three. I take inverse trig of both sides. So I do tan inverse here or arc tan tan inverse here, and these two will cancel out, and theta becomes tan um, arcs tangent of root 3 over 1 and that should end up with I believe 60 degrees and that should tell you your answer right away and if you look at your chart here uh, and I believe if I put all of these things in here this would be root 2 over root 2 root 2 over I mean root 2 over 2 1 and this should be root 3 and this should be uh, root 3 over 3 okay so we have all of these values and what do you know is that this value that's given to us as square root of 3, that ends up being a 60 degrees for your tangent, right? So we know for a fact that if I say tangent of theta is equal to root 3, then I know that the answer is 60 degrees. From this point onwards, I need you to understand that when given boundaries like this, between 0 to 360, this answer is no longer sufficient for me now whatsoever. The reason for that being is that we do not have, you guys have to stop sending me emails like this. I, I can't move that, okay. What we need to have is from 0 to 360, that's the entire four quadrants, not just the first quadrant. So 60 degrees is certainly one of the answers that you have right up here. That's in the first quadrant, and I get that. But because we have now talked about ASTC, the unit circle, and the reference angles, all of these builds into being able to solve for these trigonometric identities when we're given all four quadrants instead of being stuck in just one quadrant. That is geometry, being stuck at this first quadrant. When we're exploring all of these other quadrants, that's algebra 2 slash pre-calc uh, level. Okay, so how do we get... Oh my goodness, guys, come on. I can't move this up. How do we get all of these other values? Well, tangent of theta, we have to start from the very original part and we have to always ask this question. Is this positive or negative? Okay, first, that's the, the first thing you need to take a look at. Because you need to determine, number one, which quadrant are we talking about? Okay, you need to know where does tangent end up being a positive whatever? I know it says square root of 3, and quite frankly, I don't really care about the number. 
but I am really, really worried about what sign it is because that already tells me which quadrant, oh, that's bad, which quadrant I'll be dealing with. So square root of pos a positive square root of 3 means, if I go through my list, ASTC, my one positive value will end up at the first quadrant, the all section, right? Then I know for a fact that the second answer, like I said, always we have to have two solutions. The second answer has to lie in the third quadrant because tangent is positive down there. So when you guys do this in the calculator, the calculator is not going to solve this out for you guys. We know for a fact one of the answers is 60 degrees. Why? Because we have found out, even using inverse trig, I know that I didn't tell you, I didn't, I told you not to use specifically the calculator. By going through the chart, we know the answer is square root of 3 when the angle is 60. So one of the answer is 60. But the other answer is what's really more important. So how do we find this other angle? Well, that's 180 degrees. And judging from how we know our reference angle, we have to add additional 60 degrees, and that's going to be ending up your terminal side, right? So because when we find out the reference angle that is equal to 60 degrees, okay, but there are a total of three more reference angle. It could be in the second quadrant, third quadrant, or fourth quadrant. It could be here, here, or here. But we want to look for specifically for the one that is at the third quadrant, which means, which means the, the reference angle we always find out is 60 degrees. For the third quadrant is going to be the theta, the angle itself, minus 180. That's the formula for the third quadrant, right? So to find out the actual angle, what I need to do is theta is equal to 240 degrees because that's what 60 plus 180 is going to give you. So my final answer for number one, I would say my angles are um, 60 degrees and 240 degrees. And I guarantee you, if you go to your calculator, whatever, whatever you have, Type in tangent of 60 for me, and I believe you get 1.73 or so, because that's square root of 3. But if you also type in tangent of 240 degrees, you should also get 1.73 because, that's 3 by the way, that's because it's the same reference angle to 60 that gives you a positive value for this. Okay, so always remember the question that you need to ask for yourself is, which quadrant are we talking about? Okay, so let's try number 2 here. Number two here says negative square root of three over two is equal to sine of theta. And now first question always is which quadrant are we talking about? Now since we have a negative sign, if I draw out my little map here, ASTC, this is a specific, specific case in which I am not going to be using the first quadrant because the sign is negative. So I am looking for the two quadrants that is not going to give you a negative when we're talking about the trick. And it turns out that A, the first and the second will not do the only tangent and cosine. These two, these two quadrants are the ones that we're talking about. So when we are going through the chart here, when we go through the chart, it seems that square root of 3 over 2 for sine turns out to be right. Oh, I'm sorry, I have to go this way. It turns out to be right here. Is that? Oh, okay. Um, this chart is actually not correct. But the way that I'm going to do it then is, okay, so I have to probably change this because some of you guys are going to be very, very particular about that with me. Um, I have to change this. Sine, cosine, tangent here. Oof, I have to change a lot of this stuff here. Okay, so that is one. That is going to be square root of 3, and that's going to be square root of 3 over 3. Pretty much it's the same thing, except you guys really need to stop with the comments. Okay, and then, ooh, I, I made a mistake here again. So that's, that's square root of 3 over 2. That's 1 half. That's square root of 2, square root of 2 over 2. Okay, so now it should be finalized. So now at this chart here, what we need to take a look at is we're taking a look at square sine is going to give you a square root of 3 over 2, which is going to be this one right here, right? So that means that we're talking about, again, 60 degrees. So the reference angle is 60 degrees. Not the actual angle, the reference angle. If the reference angle is 60 and we're talking about the third and fourth quadrant, 
Well, the formula for the third and fourth quadrant for reference angle for the third one is that it's uh, theta minus 180. And reference angle for the fourth one will be 360 minus the angle itself. So if I'm actually looking for this angle, all I got to do is substitute it in 60 degrees for both here and here. So for example, 60 degrees is theta minus 180 for the third quadrant. 60 degrees is equal to 360 minus theta for my fourth quadrant. And what ends up being is that theta is 240 degrees. That's your third quadrant one, this entire thing. That is 240. And my other one here that I'm going to have, it's all the way like this. Okay, that is 360 minus theta. Well, if you do your math and do your algebra, you should end up with 300 degrees for that one. And when you guys actually take, this is a way for you to check, sine of 240 and sine of 300, you guys should end up with negative root 3 over 2 and negative, oh, negative, oh, I can't write properly, negative root 3 over 2. You guys will be getting that. So the answer would be 240 and then 300. Okay. All right. So um, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna just give you guys an assignment on this. The more complicated one that we'll be seeing here and here, I'm gonna give it to you guys for tomorrow to do. Of course, I'm gonna go over some examples with that. But for before we end up the video, I would like you guys to take a look at these two problems, and I also want you guys to take a look at the fact that it's going to be from zero to two pi. Okay. Um, probably number nine, I'm going to ask you guys to do by yourself and you guys can just check your answers with it. Uh, number seven, I want to go over this with you guys a little bit more specifically. Um, actually, it's not that bad because once we have the chart here from before, I don't think it's going to be a huge issue. So let me write this again. Sine, cosine, tangent, 30, 45, and 60. This time I won't make a mistake. Root 2 over 2 and that's 1. 1 half, 1 half, root 3 over 2, root 3 over 2. And that would make this to be, what would that be, root 3 over 3, and that should be a root 3. Okay, so we have this chart. Now, I'm looking for a tangent of theta being equal to negative 1. Now, be, before that, if I ever give you the restrictions in radians, you must give me the answer in radians. That's the bottom line. You cannot give it to me in degrees just because, oh, Mr. Kim, I am more comfortable with degrees. You can't do that. you got to give it to me in radians when I give it to you in radians. So... Tangent of uh, theta is equal to negative 1. Again, my first question is, which quadrant does it belong to? I have a negative for tangent, so ASTC. Negative for tangent means I am talking about the second and the fourth quadrant because it will be positive here and positive here. So I'm looking for a reference angle first and then using the reference angle as my guideline to figure out what this obtuse angle is and to figure out what this other angle in the fourth quadrant will be. So, there we go. It's 45. 45 reference angle gives me tangent as 1. So, if I know my reference angle is 45, the second quadrant reference angle formula is 180 minus theta, and the fourth quadrant is the reference angle is 360 minus theta. Substitute it in, 45 degrees as my angle, I mean, as my reference angle, and what I end up with is that theta here, my for second quadrant answer, would be 135 degrees. And my theta here would be, what would that be, 315 degrees. Whoops, I did it in degrees, so I have to change that, right? So if you want to actually do it in radians, I have to do pi minus theta for the second. Or the reference angle is, oh, this is not it, 2 pi minus theta. So if I do it that way... This 45 degrees will turn out to be pi over 4 in terms of radians to, for reference, pi over 6 and pi over 3 for respectively. So then I end up doing pi over 4 is equal to pi minus theta. So I know my theta here has to be 3 pi over 4 when I do the math. So pi over 4 is equal to 2 pi minus theta. And I know that my theta here, it has to be 7 pi over 4. Okay, so those two would be my angles or those would be my answers for this one. Remember, if I give it to you in radians, please give it to me in radians. But for some of you guys that are saying, oh, Mr. Kim, I feel more comfortable with degrees. Can I do it this way and then co convert my final answer to radians? Absolutely. That's fine. As long as you tell me your final answer is in terms of radians, it should be okay. Do not leave your answer like this, though, because I specifically asked you to do it in radians and you're giving me degrees. That is no good whatsoever. Pause the video now and try number nine on your own and let me know when you guys are done. 
Okay, so now assuming that you guys have the answers for me, you guys should be able to tell me that the quadrants that we're dealing with is first and the third quadrant. So I believe those two answers that ends up being here, using this reference angle as 30 degrees, it should be 30 and 210 degrees. Convert into radians, pi over 6, and the other one should be 7 pi over 6. Those two should be the answer. Okay? All right. Um, tomorrow, we're going to be talking about more complicated trigonometric equations and solving for them. But for today, the homework would be just to finish up to here. There are a total of, I believe, um, there's a total of six questions, eight, six questions in total, or even four questions. Uh, I have to double check. Uh, oh, actually, actually, wait a minute. It's going to be in total of four, uh, eight questions. So please finish them for homework. I'll give you more time because I know that my video upload is late. I apologize for that. Um, there is a small of a mishap in the morning, so I had to take care of that business first. Um, but you know, in the end, you guys are still having work, and this is a new assignment that I'm still assigning for you guys to do. Take a look at this video, and hopefully, you guys are still staying safe out there. And until we see each other again next time, please um, get used to do re uh, remote learning like this. If you guys have any questions about grading, guys, I know that I have not been proactive with the grades. I do apologize for that. Uh, just give me some more time and I'll get to it ASAP. I know that the, uh, the grading is due by Sunday. It's not this Friday, it's Sunday. So we'll have extra couple week, uh, the Saturday and Sunday to make up for whatever the grades that we have to uh, you know, put in and make sure we finalize it. So please don't panic. Uh, I'll make sure that you get the grade that you deserve. Thank you and have a good day.